Our grand theory presentation is on the Newman Systems Model by Betty Newman. Our team members are Marcel Baez Patron, Blake Baker, Dale Belillo, and Kimberly Bautista. Betty Newman was born in Marietta, Ohio in 1924. Her father was a farmer who unfortunately passed away at 36 years of age, but caring for him influenced Betty's compassion and inclination toward nursing. Her mother was a self-educated midwife. Betty Newman was raised on a farm, which encouraged her to help others in need. Newman graduated from high school in 1942 and immediately joined the wartime aircraft industry as an aircraft instrument technician. She worked at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which was the airfield where the Wright brothers tested their famous flights. Two years later, she joined the cadet nursing training program at the People's Hospital in Akron, Ohio. This is where she earned her RN diploma in 1947. After becoming an RN, she worked at the Los Angeles General Hospital in California as a staff nurse, then head nurse. Ten years later, in 1957, she earned her BSN from UCLA with a major in public health and a minor in psychology. In 1966, she earned her master's degree, also from UCLA, in mental and public health. She was hired as the department chair of the program the same year she graduated. She then helped develop the first community men mental health program for graduate students in LA. In 1970, Newman began developing the Newman Systems model, and she presented it to Joan Real Siska and sister Callista Roy. They included it in their publication, Conceptual Models for Nursing Practice. Newman was also highly interested in counseling and therapy and became a licensed marriage family therapist that same year. She published a draft of the Newman Systems Model in 1972. In 1973, she became a state mental health consultant for the West Virginia Department of Mental Health. She published her book, The Newman Systems Model, Application to Nursing Education and Practice in 1982. Three years later, she received her PhD in clinical psychology from Pacific Western University. She received several accolades in the 1990s, including an honorary doctorate of letters from Newman College, an honorary member of the Fellowship of the American Academy of Nursing, an honorary doctorate of science from Grand Valley State University, and the Walsh University Distinguished Service Medal. Betty Newman lived through some very impactful events in history. After high school, World War II began, and Professor Newman was influenced by the call for women to serve and join the workforce while many men were off fighting in Europe. This call was represented by the government's Rosie the Riveter campaign to recruit women. As mentioned previously, she joined the wartime aircraft industry, in which more than 310,000 women had jobs and made up 65% of that workforce. The 1960s were a time of social change in America, which was represented by the Civil Rights Movement, where African Americans and other minorities were fighting for equality. Women were also part of the struggle. It was after these two influential decades that Professor Newman began formulating the Newman Systems model in 1970. There are four major philosophies or theories from different disciplines that are apparent in the Newman Systems model. The first is the idea of the spiritual evolution toward higher levels of existence by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who was a Jesuit priest and philosopher. The Newman Systems model includes assessing spirituality as a factor of health. Gestalt theory, as developed by Wertheimer, Kohler, and Kafka, appears to have an influence on her view of the client as a system, where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and one must look at all the parts working together to help the whole. General adaptation syndrome by Hans Seeley can be seen in her ideas of stress, its effects on the human system, and the response to that stress. General systems theory by Ludwig von Bertalanffy influenced Professor Newman's idea of the client being an open system which is dynamic. It is affected by the environment and affects the environment in turn. Open systems are driven toward higher levels of organization. The Newman Systems model defines five interacting variables as follows. Physiological, psychological, sociocultural, developmental, and spiritual. These five variables function to attain, maintain, or retain system stability. The Newman Systems model is based on a general system theory and states that the nature of living organisms are open systems that interact with each other and with the environment. The psychosocial component is characterized as mental processes interacting with the environment. The sociocultural component refers to effects of social and cultural conditions. The spiritual component refers to spiritual beliefs and influences. 
Lastly, the developmental component refers to age-related processes and activities. The theory focuses on the response of the patient system to actual or potential environmental stressors and the use of primary, secondary, and tertiary nursing intervention to maintain stability. The model is based on the patient's relationship to stress, reaction to it, and reconstitution factors that are dynamic. These are the concepts of the Newman Systems model in relation to the nursing meta paradigm. The purpose of practice is to assist clients in retaining, attaining, or maintaining the optimal system of stability achievable at a given point in time. Optimal stability means that there is harmony among the five client system variables. In Newman's model, the term client is synonymous with the nursing meta paradigm concept person. The term client indicates a collaborative relationship between caregiver and care receiver and focuses on the wellness perspective of the model. In Newman's model, the client can be defined as any system that interacts with the environment. Therefore, the client may be defined as an individual, family, group, or community, and all the person variables apply in each case. Newman defines environment as the totality of the internal and external forces which surround a person and with which they interact at any given time. The internal environment exists within the client's system. The external environment exists outside the client system. Both of these involve the five variables within a person as well as the stressors that they may face. And then the creative environment is interplay between the open system of the person and the environment. The environment is affected by first the flexible line of defense, which is the outer boundary of the client and can help prevent stressors from attacking the client. A simple example is using a coat and scarf to protect against the cold. The second is the normal line of defense, which is the baseline wellness of the client. And it's the standard by which um, a clinician can determine any variance from the wellness. The last is the lines of resistance. Um, it acts when the normal line of defense is invaded too much by stressors and causes alteration in the normal health pattern to facilitate coping and overcome the stressors. An example is a rise in white blood cells to fight infection or inflammation. Newman sees health as the condition in which all parts and subparts are in harmony with the whole client. And she views health as a continuum from wellness to illness. And the model focuses on the impact of stressors on health and addresses stress and the reduction of stress. Stressors are capable of either having positive or negative effects on the client's system. Newman sees nursing as a unique profession that is concerned with all of the variables that influence the response a person might have to a stressor. The person is seen as a whole, and it is the task of the nurse to address the whole person. It may be easy for one to overlook certain variables as illness becomes more complicated and care becomes more complex. However, this basic principle is important to maintain while providing holistic care. Newman's three-step nursing process aims to maintain the stability of the client system. The first step, nursing diagnosis, entails that the nurse must collect an adequate database that can be analyzed to make a diagnosis. The second step is nursing goals. According to Newman's theory, during this step, goals are negotiated with the client. These goals help guide the strategies that are used as appropriate prevention and intervention. The last step is nursing outcomes, where the goals are evaluated and evolved as needed. Stressors are environmental forces that may alter or disturb the stability of the system. Intrapersonal stressors relate to interactions that happen within the client system. Interpersonal stressors occur outside the client system. An example of this are interactions between two or more individuals, such as having role expectations. Extrapersonal stressors are all interactions outside of the client system, but they happen at a greater distance than interpersonal stressors. Examples of this are financial circumstances and social policy. These stressors can affect the person's normal line of defense. The three levels of prevention were mentioned earlier. Here we will go in depth. Primary prevention takes place even before the client can respond to a stressor. The purpose is to reduce the possibility of encounter with the stressor. This primary prevention can be applied to the nursing assessment and intervention. Through this process, there is identification and reduction of possible or actual risk factors to the patient. Secondary prevention takes place after the client responds to a stressor. This is the patient's reaction to the stressor. During this time, the appropriate treatment to reduce the effect of the stressors are critical. Tertiary prevention occurs after the active treatment or secondary prevention stage that it focuses 
on readjustment toward the optimal client's system stability. This prevention is also known as the adjustive process that is taking place as reconstitution begins. This diagram depicts the process of the three different types of interventions just mentioned. The Newman Systems model can be used as a guideline for education for health professionals, as well as a guideline for administering healthcare services. When used as a guide for education, the focus of the four nursing meta paradigm concepts is modified. Person becomes the learners in the educational program. Environment becomes the surroundings of the learners, which includes teacher-learner interactions and the settings in which the education takes place. Health becomes the curriculum that promotes teachers' ability to communicate content effectively and efficiently, and learners' ability to comprehend and apply content, as well as the advancement of the healthcare discipline of interest. Nursing becomes the teaching, learning, and advising strategies used by teachers. There's a long-standing link between the Newman Systems model and educational tools. The model initially was designed as an educational tool to help students organize the content of clinical nurse specialist courses at UCLA. The Newman Systems model has helped develop educational tools to guide students' learning and to examine students' progress in courses based on the model and to examine model-based course materials and curricula. Not only have educational tools come from Betty Newman's theory, but also many colleges base their curricula on the Newman Systems model. The application of the Newman Systems model for use in the administration of healthcare services requires a modification in the focus of the four nursing metaparadigm concepts. Human beings becomes the staff of the clinical agency. Environment becomes the surroundings of the staff. Health becomes the wellness or illness state of the staff. Nursing becomes the management strategies and the administrative policies used by administrators on behalf of or in conjunction with the staff and the entire healthcare organization. The theory has been shown to have high testability. The purpose of this study by Morella Tinez et al. was to determine if social factors such as housing conditions, satisfaction with one's house, neighborhood characteristics, social support, family relations, and church attendance affect allostatic load in older adults. Allostatic load refers to the wear and tear of the body. The study concluded that there are several social factors contributing to the development of allostatic load in older adults. It's necessary to create nursing strategies toward the social environment to decrease allostatic load in older, in older adults, thus providing holistic care. The degree of reaction to a stressor depends on the resources available to the client to deal with the situation, the type of stressor, or the amount of stressors that try to enter the system. This research focused on two types of stressors, interpersonal and extrapersonal. The interpersonal stressors are forces of the external environment occurring outside the boundaries of the client system at proximal range, such as family and social support. And the extrapersonal ones are external environmental interaction forces occurring outside the boundaries of the client system at distal range, such as the characteristics of the neighborhood. When the older adult does not have the ability to cope with stressors, flexible line and normal line of defense, stability is lost and defense mechanisms are activated, the line of resistance. If there are insufficient resources to address the threat, signs and symptoms occur that reflect the alternation and well-being of the client. After reviewing the research, we concluded that the theory is non-parsimonious. The reason is that the model is complex and many parts of the model are able to function in multiple ways. In addition, the model's description is not simple and can be abstract and confusing. It also has underlying assumptions. Newman's model is widely used in nursing education and practice. The educational utility of the model extends internationally to a diverse range of countries. It's also used in areas of medicine, surgery, women's and mental health. Newman's model is also used extensively in nursing research. Middle range theories are theories that encompass the overall grand theory. However, they are on a more specific and narrow subject. First introduced in the field of sociology in the 60s, these theories allow more flexibility in research in support of the grand theory. However, they must be explicit and testable. Middle range theories have characteristics that include being simple, straightforward, with a limited number of variables, and they adjust concepts within the scope of the meta paradigm. They are most common in nursing research. In another study by Amadi and Sadegi, Newman's model was applied to patients with multiple sclerosis admitted to a neurological ward in an urban hospital. The patient stressors were identified, including physiological, psychological, interpersonal, and extrapersonal, 
Newman's levels of prevention were applied based on the nursing diagnoses identified. The study showed desirability of care and higher patient satisfaction when the Newman Systems Model Framework was applied. To conclude, Betty Newman once stated that her personal philosophy was simply helping each other live. This meant that we should be willing to help others who were in need to help them better their quality of life as much as possible. As nurses, we can do that by applying the Newman Systems Model to the way we care for our patients. Thank you.